How's it guys? This is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video, I'm going to take you guys through the best predicted team or at least the team that's predicted to score the most points in two different scenarios. So the first scenario is going to be looking at game week one on its own and basically doing the best free at team that you guys can have for the opening game week. Things that you can kind of take from this certain team are going to be captaincy. You can also maybe if you're looking at an early wild card, you can base your own selection on this team and that will hopefully give you guys a nice early start to the premier season before you do use that early wild card. And then the last thing about this selection is actually going to be something that a manager commented on one of my videos yesterday. He said that he wanted to win the weekly game week FPL rewards or prizes if you guys don't know fpl obviously has those long prizes over the entire season but then every single game week they do give a couple of prizes to the manager that has the highest game week score in that respective game week so this certain manager requested that i make the best possible game week one team for him so that he can hopefully win those rewards so that's exactly what the first scenario is going to be all about so if you guys also want to go for the weekly rewards and you can kind of copy this team modify it to add your own flavor and then hopefully you can be at the top of the leaderboard or the top of the overall ranks come the end of game week one the next scenario is probably the one that i'm going to recommend that you guys focus on more it's going to be looking at the best predicted team over the opening six game weeks so if you guys have been following this channel for quite a while you'll know that i usually like to use six game weeks as kind of our metric to measure players against and i kind of measure the potential that that player possesses as it gives that player enough time to kind of fulfill that potential even though it is quite a short term period so we're going to be going over that team and I think that one will be slightly more useful than only looking at game week one as I'm pretty sure most of us will be looking to slightly more the medium term and then using an early wild card. So without further ado, sit back, relax and let's get straight into it. So this video is heavily going to be using the fantasy football fix algorithm. I've spoken about it so many times throughout this preseason and I'm pretty sure that most of you guys are bored. But for those of you who don't know, I do have an affiliate link for 65% discount. And why I'm kind of repeating this is that it does end as game week one commences. So you guys can only get this discount in the preseason. And that's why I'm kind of reminding you guys about it in basically every single video. But please forgive me and now let's get on to the actual talking points. So before we get into the actual draft slash teams, I wanted to give you guys some context about the drafts and the teams that I managed to create with the algorithm. So if you guys do go onto the advanced options of the Fantasy Football Fix Team Assistant Manager, you guys will see that you have a couple of options that you can play around with. The first one I'm going to be talking about is going to be the bench option. And basically what this is, it's a slider from 0 to 100% on how much emphasis the budget should have on your bench. So I usually put this quite low. For this video, I used it at 10%, which is quite low on my perspective, but I think that it can go lower if you guys want to kind of squeeze the most value value into that starting 11 and that's probably what I would recommend especially at the start of the season I don't think you guys need necessarily three playing bench options my personal favorite is to kind of go for two and with those 4.5 options the midfield and the defense there's an adequate amount of options that still have great fixtures or great potential to get you some FPL points so if you guys want to go higher than this that's perfectly fine this is your own kind of team you can do whatever you want with it but as I said my recommendation would be not to have too much value tied up on your bench the next constraint that I did put on the algorithm was going to be the exclusions. And what this is, it's basically players that I've selected manually to be excluded from the algorithm so that the algorithm can't put these players in my team selection and allows you to put some more variance. And if you do want certain players in your lineup, you can do that with these kind of exclusions because you can also do inclusions where you kind of force it to select certain players. So the exclusions that I put on the algorithm for this video was that I took out certain players like a Nat Phillips from Liverpool because the algorithm really does favor Nat Phillips because I think it expects him to start the opening couple game weeks whereas I personally don't think he's going to start so I did that as an exclusion and then I also selected some of the players that are still having the kind of holidays uh, some Man City options like Raheem Sterling, uh, Gabriel Jesus, those certain players that it likes to pick but doesn't really take into account that they have been missing from training for quite a prolonged amount of time so I don't think those options are going to start game week one or at least the opening couple game weeks so that's why i did some manual exclusions on them and what i would do is i would analyze what team it actually picks for you and then i would exclude the options that you guys don't want as this makes it quite useful and it gives the draft a little bit more of a personal flavor then the final talking point i've kind of already gone over i did it in two scenarios game week one and the first six game weeks but i've spoken about that enough in depth so let's get right on to the first draft so as i mentioned game week one is going to be the first draft that we kind of look at so please remember that this is only for one one singular game week and it's not going to be for the opening six so i would only recommend going for this draft if you really want to kind of hone in on the first game week and then just kind of hope that these players manage to produce in the opening couple game weeks there are some options here that i haven't seen in many people's teams uh, the chelsea options probably 
stand out, but that's just because their game week one fixture against Crystal Palace is great, but their game week two and three fixtures aren't that great at all. So we're first going to talk about the bench because as I always say, that's the most boring option to kind of talk about. Uh, starting off with Foster, nothing to talk about there. 4.0 goalkeeper, kind of everyone has him in their team. An interesting thing that I actually saw someone say was that a lot of people do have Foster, so if they transfer him out, he's going to drop in price, which might be a little bit of an annoying thing to happen. But personally, I think that Foster will be on my bench for most of the season, so I'm not really too worried about him dropping in price. The other options on the bench, we've got Brownier from Burnley, which is my personal 4.5 kind of midfielder that I've gone for. There are other options that you guys can go for, but I think that Brownier and Basuma are basically where it's at for me. And the final two players that we do have are Marty from Leicester. Now, he has been a selection that has been popping up in my comments with people asking me, is the Leicester center back slash fullback going to start? So Percy, I do think he'll start the opening couple of game weeks for Leicester, and I think he'll be benched once either the center backs come back from fitness, such as a Johnny Evans, for fun is going to be out for most of the season. So I wouldn't expect him back anytime soon, unfortunately, with that broken leg. But if they do sign another center back in this transfer window, I think that Amati will find himself on the bench, which is why I think that he's going to be a quite a short-lived option at that 4.0 price tag. But I think for the opening couple of game weeks, 100%, if you guys want to go from that's perfectly fine. Then the final player that's on the bench is going to be Ida from Norwich. If you guys don't know who he is, he's a 5.0 forward for a kind of Norwich. And I have seen him produce quite a lot of results throughout this preseason. So got a couple of goals, a couple of assists. So definitely looks good. I just don't really favor those Norwich fixtures at the start. So I might kind of downgrade him for another 4.5 and then just upgrade that 0.5 somewhere else in the team. But now going on to the actual starting 11, we've got a double up in defense here with Trent Alexander-Arnold and then also Allison. So Allison's an interesting one because I haven't really seen him in any people's drafts and I can perfectly understand why. It's just because he's a little bit more expensive and you probably would prefer to afford a fullback in that uh, slot instead of spending uh, that money on a goalkeeper. As in my opinion, there are 4.5 goalkeepers that uh, will prove probably better value for money over the entire season unless Allison continues his kind of goal scoring run that he had last season. The rest of the defense, we've got Luke Shaw here, which is kind of a template option, over 50% ownership at the current moment. So definitely would recommend going for him. And then we also have Callum Chambers from Arsenal. Now you can always swap out Chambers for Ben White if you don't think Chambers will start. But I do personally favor Chambers at that slot because he is currently playing at that right back position. Right center back could also be the place for him if they do play a back five. But I think at 4.5, not too much risk there, but I probably would favor Ben White just because he's probably going to be a little bit more nailed. The final defender to talk about is going to be Aspi Liqueta. Now, I don't really know if Aspi is back in training. As far as I know, he should be fine for the opening couple game weeks. I would probably prefer going with someone like a Ben Shaw, but as you guys know, played in the Euros final, so I don't really know when he's going to be back in training. And I don't really think he'll be back for game week one, so maybe Aspi Liqueta could be a nice option here. And if he does play that fullback position, could probably return a couple of attacking returns against Crystal Palace. Going on to the midfield here, and there's not too much blue in the midfield, and you can understand why when you see that kind of selection. Salah, Bruno Fernandes won't focus on them because I've spoken about them enough in this preseason, and you guys are probably absolutely bored of me talking about these two premiums. So we'll be focusing on the Aston Villa double up, which is going to be El Ghazi, and then also Bertrand Traore. So I think the fantasy football fix algorithm is favoring Traore and El Ghazi right now because Buendia is rumored to be out for game week one. So that is a rumor, as I said, just wait for maybe the Aston Villa manager to confirm that in the press conference coming up later in the week but as we know he did miss the Aston Villa friendly and wasn't even on the bench because he hadn't been training for the preceding days which is a little bit worrying considering that game week one is only a couple of days away so I can understand Bertrand Traore, El Ghazi perfectly fine options if Buendia is out I think that both these options will play especially if Ollie Watkins is also out with that knock that he picked up in the second half of their friendly a couple days ago. Both these options, great fixtures coming up. Opening three fixtures look absolutely stellar, so I would recommend going with at least one Aston Villa option in that attack. Then the final two players in the starting 11 are going to be our two forwards, and it's going to be Antonio, which is 100% fine, my essential forward to go for. But then the second one is a little bit more differential. We've got Timo Werner here. Yes, I know Timo Werner. I didn't pick up too much hype last season, but maybe this is going to be the season for the German striker. I personally would probably favor maybe downgrading him and going for a Havertz. Because I think that Havertz will start at that false nine position, which is a position that I really do like him. And in FPL, kind of any out of position player is definitely going to be worth it in terms of those FPL points that they hopefully will return because they are out of position. So overall, you can see that the Chelsea fixture is heavily favored here. And I would probably recommend that fixture if you guys do want to go more differential. But if you guys want to go kind of safe, you can see the Liverpool fixture against Norwich is obviously going to be that fixture to kind of target. And I would recommend going for at least two Liverpool options and also probably captaining Mo Salah himself. 
So now going on to the game week one to six. So what is the best predicted team for the opening six game weeks? Well, this is going to be it. Now, just remember, as I mentioned in that kind of constraints uh, talking point, I did put some exclusions on here. I put Raheem Sterling out. I put Gabriel Jesus out. And that's because the fantasy football fix algorithm really favors those kind of options. And the reason for that is that Man City's fixtures, game week two against Norwich at home, absolutely plump fixture for them. And definitely would recommend if you do own a Man City option, maybe looking at captaining them. But then also later on in that opening six, they do have some great fixtures as well, where they actually are favored as the captaincy options by the algorithm. So going over the bench to start, we've got Foster in goal, but then actually on the bench for game week one, we've got some nice options there resting. And I don't really prefer that. I prefer having kind of no money on my bench, but I can maybe understand it here because we do have two 4.5 defenders starting in game week one, but they've gone for Tony from Brentford, which I'm perfectly fine with at 6.5. Great option to go for. They might just not favor that Arsenal fixture. That's why they've got Callum Chambers in goal and uh, Tony on the bench. But then we go to some more expensive options with Nelson Semedo from Wolves. And if you guys do remember when I did create this video earlier on in the preseason, the Wolves defenders were quite favored because I think from game week three to six, that's some really good fixtures to kind of go for from a defensive and an attacking point of view. So Nelson Semedo makes his way onto the bench and then we have a repetition of Ida against Liverpool. Not going to be my starting lineup. Even the algorithm kind of agrees with that. It's kind of a no-brainer decision. So he's going to be kind of firmly rooted to third place on the bench. Going on to the rest of the team, we've got a switch up in the goalkeeper department and we've got Sanchez, which I'm perfectly fine with my personal own draft kind of goalkeeper and I would recommend going for him if you are looking for a 4.5 option. Then the rest of the defense, we've got our two premiums here, Trent and uh, Luke Shaw, 100% would go for these two. But now we kind of switch it up so that we can go for that absolutely stacked midfield. We now have Feltman and we also have Chambers yet again at that 4.5 mark. So it's actually quite interesting here that the fix algorithm heavily favors that Brighton defense. And when you look at the fixtures, you can perfectly understand why. It's just going to kind of depend if uh, Brighton can keep up that defensive form that they showed last season. But going on to the midfield, as this is where things get a little bit more interesting, we yet again have that double up of that Aston Villa attack with El Ghazi and then also Bertrand Traore. And then you also have Mo Salah and Fernandes on the other side as your two premium assets. But now, because you've kind of downgraded that four department and that defense, you can now afford Riyad Mahrez. And I would recommend if you guys are going to be going for Man City option, I think that Riyad Mahrez is where it's at because not only has he got so many preseason minutes, but with all these injuries currently that Man City have, Jack Grealish might not start. We have full Foden is going to be out for a prolonged amount of time. Same with Kevin De Bruyne. I think that Mahrez has to start at that right wing position, his favorite position, and I think that he can do really well against these opening sides for Man City. Now Spurs away isn't the best fixture in the world, but I do think this is Man City we're talking about. Is Harry Kane going to be playing for Spurs? Who knows? Is he going to be on the opposite side playing for Man City? We're going to see that over the next couple of days, hopefully. But I think Riyad Mahrez at 9 million is the perfect Man City option to go for if you are looking to kind of go for them in the opening couple of game weeks. Only room for one forward in this draft is going to be Antonio, but I'm perfectly fine with that. My personal favorite striker to go for. But then we will have obviously Tony coming off the bench for the other game weeks when Brentford's fixtures do improve slightly. But overall, this draft actually looks quite good. I think it's obviously heavy relying on Brendia being out because then you're going to kind of have to downgrade someone else to afford Brendia for either Bertrand Traore or Al Ghazi. But if Brendia is out injured, I think that these two options could be absolute gold, especially for those opening three game weeks. But this is basically wrap the video, guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. Please don't forget to like if you did and subscribe if you're new have not subscribed yet tons of content coming up from now to that game week one deadline make sure that you guys do check out my team selection that i did drop yesterday and let me know if you're kind of liking my draft or if you think that i should make some changes to it i'll be seeing you guys for other videos as well as that deadline stream coming up on friday evening but i'm only signing off it's been davey fpl and i'm out cheers bye